Hey guys, happy Sunday. Welcome back. Happy Labor Day weekend to all of you as well. I hope you're each enjoying this three-day weekend. And don't forget, if you are outside of the United States, it is a holiday weekend here, so there will be no trading on the stock market on Monday. In this video, I want to talk with you a little bit about AMC. We have the domestic weekend estimates now in for domestic box office. Want to go through that with you and let you know how the projection for Q3 is looking. We are still on track for profit, but it's gonna be close. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about Beetlejuice. I wanna talk about the FUD that is going on hot and heavy out there on social media, both about this movie that I have up on the screen, City of Dreams and AMC. A lot of people putting out bankruptcy FUD, reverse split FUD. A lot of people heavily invested in putting out what I would call misinformation. So we're going to talk about that for a second. And I want to talk with you again briefly about the bonds, where the bonds are trading at, when those convertible bonds will convert, if ever. And maybe we'll finish by looking at a chart. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, stick around. We're going to keep it as quick as possible. Let's start off by talking about City of Dreams, a movie about child trafficking. And the word on the street, at least on social media, is that AMC is trying to suppress people from watching this movie. Regional managers are being instructed to tell people that the movie is full. And here's how I know that's hogwash, because you can go on the app, you can go on the company's website, you can even use the self-service kiosk in the lobby and see the seat selection and make your selection, make your purchase and get your tickets without any problem. The only time that really someone might even have to deal with a person to buy a ticket is if you're wanting to pay cash. And you can still use the kiosk in the lobby to check the seat selection as long as you're arriving before the published start time of the movie. You guys might remember that a similar misinformation campaign was pushed out by conspiracy theorists in 2023 over Sound of Freedom. It got so bad with the misinformation that the studio itself put out a press release calling the misinformation nonsense and even thanking AMC for adding additional screens so that more people could see Sound of Freedom. With City of Dreams, it's gotten so bad that we have people now filming themselves going into the theater to talk to a manager and ask them, is it true that I can't buy a ticket? Let's see what the manager here has to say. Uh, I would know, were you aware of like any reports coming in about like regional managers like telling employees to like tell people that, that the uh, movie was sold out? Uh, not at all, no, I haven't heard any such thing, no, let's see. Definitely not sold out. Definitely really? not sold out. Okay. There's plenty of seats in there. We've only sold plenty of seats tickets. available, she said. Oh, I see, right there. Yeah, we've only sold six tickets. Yeah. yeah so so, see how you can okay. see the seat sold they and seats available right there. They haven't told me anything to say anything about this movie whatsoever. I don't even know what it's about. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, it's like a kind of a sensitive subject. It's about like Anyways, if you see this out on social media, direct people to the website, direct people to the app, direct them to the kiosks, and let's stop this misinformation campaign. Moving on to the box office estimated for this weekend from Box Office Mojo. We have overall gross for this weekend, August 30th through September 2nd. Coming in at almost $95 million here in the middle of the screen. Top 10 movies, 84.7. Total overall gross, $94.8 million for the weekend. Looking at the breakdown, again, we still have strong performance from Deadpool and Alien. Plus, it ends with us and Reagan, a new movie this weekend, coming in at $9.2 million. Twisters at number five, The Forge, an excellent Christian movie at $6.3 million. Blink Twice is also a great movie, $5.9 million. And Afraid, the follow-on to Megan, about AI taking over your house came in at $4.475 million for the weekend. A little bit lower in the rankings, we have 1992, a new movie coming out this weekend, $1.6 million. I watched it. It's a good film. And Strange Darling coming in just under a million dollars. I don't know why more people aren't seeing this movie. It is an excellent film, one that I highly recommend to you. I immensely enjoyed it. It is tough to find, though. It's only being shown in a little over a thousand theaters. I had to drive all the way across town to the furthest away 
AMC to watch this one, but it is well worth the drive if you can find it. With this weekend's numbers, that brings our Q3 domestic box office total to just over $2.1 billion, $2.119 billion. We have four weeks to go for Q3. I already have seen the Fudsters out this weekend saying Q3's over, AMC only made $2 billion. What a huge disappointment, guys. The quarter is not over until the end of September. So kick those fudsters into the dirt. Let's at least make them provide accurate information about when the quarter's over, huh? With four weeks left to go, we have Beetlejuice coming up this coming weekend. The official release date is September 6th. Beetlejuice is currently expected to bring in $105 million on its opening weekend, making it the third biggest domestic movie opening of 2024. Beetlejuice is going to be the key to a successful Q3 for the industry. We do have a couple of other good movies coming out at the end of September, including September 20th, Transformers 1. And on September 27th, we have Megalopolis, which will be a big hit or a big flop. And we have the Wild Robot, an adventure animation sci-fi movie. I'm keeping in mind that Transformers 1 and the Wild Robot are hitting at the end of the quarter. So my estimate remains firm for Q3, my expectation anyways, my guess for what the domestic box office is going to be. I'm calling it between 2.4 billion and 2.6 billion. And of course, I hope that we beat that number. I know a lot of y'all want to see a lot higher number than that, and that would be perfectly fine with me, but I'm sticking with the 2.4 to 2.6 billion. I think that is pretty easy to do in the four weeks that we have remaining in Q3. 2.45 billion in my mind is a key number for domestic box office because according to my spreadsheet, which I use every quarter to kind of guess what the net profit or net loss of AMC for the quarter is going to be, according to my spreadsheet, this is a pretty safe domestic box office number where we could estimate that AMC is likely to break even. Uh, anything above $2.45 billion domestic box office would generate in my estimate here on the spreadsheet, a profitable quarter for AMC. There are going to be some other things going on this quarter, like the debt payoff that AMC did back in July. We might have some extra numbers tacked on here, gain from extinguishment of debt. I'm not worried about that. That's not a cash transaction. That is just accounting. So the number might look even better, but what we really want to focus on is operational profit and minimizing any cash burn. So $2.45 billion is what I want to see for domestic box office. That means that AMC is not going to spend any of its cash in Q3. And that is a good thing. Speaking of cash, I saw some of the Fudsters out this weekend saying AMC is going to go bankrupt because they have $2.9 billion due in debt in 2026. I guess these guys are so busy putting out their false information that they can't be bothered to read the press releases. July 22nd, 2024, AMC restructured the bulk of that 2026 debt. And according to what we're seeing on the bond market with the bond prices trending up, the bond market is not considering the AMC has a high risk of bankruptcy. I would much rather see you guys get your signals from the bond market about risk of bankruptcy than some FUD account on Twitter or social media. Watching the bond prices go up is a good signal that bankruptcy risk is diminishing. But if you've been watching my channel, you know that I consider AMC a speculative play, one in which you must take your own personal responsibility to manage the level of risk that you're putting into the stock if you're buying it. Why do I call it a speculative? of play because the company is still losing money on an annual basis and I expect that 2024 will be an overall loss for AMC. But we also expect that the movie industry as a whole is going to deliver much better box office in 2025 and in 2026 based on the current information that we know. So those are some of the things that you need to think about as you're deciding what to do. And AMC still has an upside down balance sheet. There is some more potential for dilution down the road. They have about 100 million shares, giving them the ability to raise 500 million more dollars in cash if they need to. I can't tell you if they're going to dilute some more with certainty or when they're going to dilute some more. I do know that the balance sheet still needs a little bit of polishing. And if the price runs up, I would expect that the company would take advantage of that by issuing some more shares or doing another debt for equity swap. 
Again, things you need to think about as a shareholder. With that risk in mind and the ability I have to forecast based on what we know about the box office, what I think is going to happen with the price, I'm still trading AMC stock. When this run up happened in May and the stock skyrocketed to $12, I did sell my position again for a profit and I bought back in on August 5th. My current cost basis is $4.20. I understand the risk of future potential dilution, but I also am a believer that the box office is going to continue to improve. And I think that my risk is minimal right here. Don't follow my trades. My risk tolerance might not be the same as yours. And the other thing I'm doing is managing my position size until I know for sure that AMC is giving us guidance for a full year of profitable earnings. We can see that the other theater stocks are moving up. Most of them are profitable. That is why they're giving guidance of a full year of profitable earnings. And when that happens for AMC, however long that takes, I'm not saying that that's gonna happen in the next week or the next quarter, but when that happens for AMC, then I think you see this thing starting to trade up. And in the meantime, maybe we'll get lucky with Roaring Kitty coming back or some other surprise news that no one's expecting and you get a, a pop up on the price. If however there is some bad market news or some company specific news that causes the stock to drop below these green support zones that I have, I might reconsider what I'm doing with my position at least on a short term basis. A minute ago I threw up the bond summary. Let's put that up on the screen one more time. I want to direct your attention to the bottom of the screen. The bottom two lines that you'll notice there are the 2030 bonds. They are trading above par at close to $117. These are the convertible bonds. That is the premium that is being assigned to those bonds because they are convertible at some point in the future to shares. And I do not think that any of the bonds have been converted into shares yet. The effective conversion price is $5.66. And folks that are in the industry, bond traders are telling me, Tony, don't expect that these bonds are going to be converted into shares anytime soon. Maybe in the future when AMC gets over $6 and maybe closer up to $10, there might be some conversion happening. But for the moment, at least, there's no rush on the part of the bondholders to convert those bonds into shares. They basically have six free years to wait and see if the share price goes up. And the higher it goes, the more money they'll make when they do decide to convert. So to summarize what I'm thinking, no conversions happened. There's no immediate risk of conversion, especially while we're trading below $5.66. And I'm being told that I probably should not expect that these bonds will be converted until closer to 2030, maybe 2029, unless AMC is really trading up on price far above the range that we're at right now. That is my DD. That is the working information that I'm going to be using as I'm analyzing this play. You're free to disregard that. You're free to not like it. You're free to have a different opinion, but that is the working DD that I'm going to be using on this channel until we get some new information. That is all I got for you guys today. I hope you're going out there and watching some movies and buying concessions. They might be able to short the stock price, but you know what they can't short? They can't short revenue. And much like you, I want to see the box office numbers go as high as possible because that just works out in everybody's favor. If you have questions or comments, leave them for me down below. I am Tony DeNaro, and I will see you on the next video. So you are